So, uh, good morning, everyone. I think we are not going to wait more uh, for this. Uh, there are 38 students, and I request you all to keep your uh, mic on mute mode. Uh, so, good morning once again. Uh, I'm really feeling very uh, happy to introduce this amazing personality and uh, which I have never met, but you uh, realized uh, during the session how wonderful he is. And uh, if, if I talk about his uh, designation, he is a principal scientist, as you already know, I have already shared with you, that is working as a principal scientist at CCMB. And uh, if I talk about research interest, he is uh, uh, working in early diagnosis of infection, genetic disorder, and metabolic disorders. Uh, and uh, there are many other treatments required, uh, many trained techniques, and uh, I mean, accurate, uh, you know, uh, technical persons. And also, he is looking for the uh, developing diagnosis tool that uh, are affordable or for example, developing a microfluidic paper-based analytical devices or paper microfluidic devices coupled with an instrument-free or a portable devices. Uh, so apart from this, his, he and his work is uh, his group is working with uh, working on paper-based devices as a Raman immune sensor, non-conventional methods to fabricate microfluidic devices, biopolymer microfluidic devices for tissue engineering and cell culture, 3D printing and 3D cell culture, generation of site-targeted drug delivery vectors for drug delivery and diagnosis using microfluidic devices. And there are number of paper on his name. I'm not going to go for that. Uh, in very um, reputed national and international journal with high impact factors. And uh, he is uh, actually passed out from Bhaktula University, Bhopal in uh, applied chemistry. And from the same university, he has uh, run his PhD on detection of enhancement and separation of toxic compounds using capillary electrophoresis and other nano and micro, uh, micro scale analytical techniques. And uh, during his postdoc, uh, postdoctoral study, um, he has worked at various institute and received prestigious fellowships like uh, QD postdoctoral fellowship at Institute of uh, QD France during 2000 to 2001, worked on microfluidic separation of flash DNA molecules, as well as at uh, he later then joined University of Illinois at Urban, uh, Urban Champaign at USA, uh, worked on microfluid cell um, with as a DAPA postdoctoral fellow. And then he joined a South Korean uh, National University as research professor. And uh, later, uh, he also received a brain pool fellowship uh, for the same university during 2006 to 2008. And he has more than 22 years of working experience in various uh, research institutes. And there are a uh, number of pat patents on his name. Uh, that you can see the profile uh, on CCMB or you can, you know, search about him. But I'm not going to waste time behind introduction. There are a lot of things to include in his profile. Uh, so with this, uh, sir, I'm really... Uh... Megha, Megha, I would like to add one more sentence for yeah. Dr. Asana. Sure, uh, So Dr. Amit sir, thank you. Uh, I would uh, like to uh, say to everyone that he was my postdoc mentor and uh, he has only introduced me to paper-based microfluidic device. I owe you, sir. You, you are very supportive and very informative. So I owe you uh, really. Thank you very much, sir. And students, pleasure, look sir, forward. Mm. Uh, this, uh, like, this lecture would be very informative and learn something new today. Thank, thank you, sir. Saila. Thank you, Megha and Saila, for um, um, uh, nice words. Um, and um, I can start, um, Megha. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No so problems. please let me know if you can see my slide. In can you see all of you see my slides now? Yes. Okay. So I'm just trying to pull this right. So um, as uh, Megha told you that I my work is on paper microfluidics and today's topic is also related to paper-based analytical devices. 
Um, so I will talk about fabrication first. And as some of the application, some application which I will, uh, which we have done in our lab, I will cover, and some application which other people have done. Not a lot because paper-based devices and diagnostic is such a large field. I cannot cover everything in one and a half, um, you know, hour uh, presentation. What I would like to do here is I want to give you a glimpse of how paper devices are made. Last time in last BIS school, I have presented and many people have contacted me and I have made the devices for them because they don't have facility. Same thing I can do for, for all of you. So after presentation, if you feel you have any idea, if you can make your devices by your own, that's very fine. Need my help? Let me know. I will help you in whatever way it is possible. That is the whole idea of this school also. Not only to share my knowledge, if I can help you guys to become an entrepreneur or make devices, I would love to do that. Okay. So in vitro market uh, is a huge market at the moment. You know? And we all are looking towards low cost POC. So when you say low cost POC, most uh, good, the best example is pregnancy kit. Pregnancy kit for, for human beings is about $40 or $50 where you take urine sample and do analysis. But that's not a paper device. That's a nitrocellulose membrane-based devices. Similarly, glucose glucometer is one example of POC device. But you have to buy a reader also. So most of the work which I'm doing in my lab are related to just device making. I'm not interested in making the readout system. That is not my job. If anybody wants to make, they can do like, I think Sahila is trying something. Uh, many other people are trying, uh, working on similar, similar aspects. So I just want to concentrate on um, what WHO has uh, guidelines tell about diagnostics. So what they say is you should have a so a short device. That means it should be affordable, sensitive, specific, users friendly, robust, equipment free. So I don't want this equipment to be used and deliverable to end use. So I can say yes or no, that should be enough. If anybody wants to extend it, that's, that's their idea, they can do it. Uh, we want to leave it there and we want to stop there our work and people can take it from there to, to higher level. How we can do that? There are various ways of doing it. You can make nitrocellulose membrane, you can do various things, but microfluidics is the key. Microfluidics, nothing, but when you play with the fluids in a microfabricated channel, that is microfluidic in simple word. So you have microfabricated a channel, you fill it with some solution, and if you are moving that solution in the channel, it will behave completely differently. Okay, it will uh, water uh, water in in a, in a micro channel will behave like a honey because it has higher surface area, more resistance. So the whole physics changes there in that those dimensions. So there are various advantage of such kind of uh, you know um, confined uh, areas. So microfluidics is more suitable for POC testing uh, in uh, just. Uh, he's not there, please. Uh, and uh, I'm at a meeting. Sorry. Okay. Sorry for for this uh, inconvenience. So I'll uh, go further. So there are various type of substrates substrates which can be used for microfluidics. Okay, silicon, glass, plastic, textile, and paper, and also nitrocellulose. My group work is working on recognition and then physiochemical output it can be this portion we have completely neglected we are not at all in uh, you know giving importance to this we are just trying to see if we can have color colorometric reaction where with the color you can say uh, whether your reaction is taking place or not single processing is also not my part i am um, my kind of poc just sorry my P kind of poc is just limited to recognition and readout in form of color color okay nitrocellulose membranes and plastic glasses everything can be used but they are expensive paper in other hand is uh, available everywhere and it is the cheapest probably source of uh, of of um, 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 
making the devices okay that is what uh, we are trying currently now in in why paper uh, because um, you know my actually sorry my group interest is in uh, in paper because uh, and we use fab various fabrication method which i will um, discuss and i i work on colorimetry we are trying to do electrochemical we are already doing uh, raman uh, substrate also and mostly naked eye detection okay and we also do bioactivation of paper paper is something which is completely inert the paper has some oh group but they are not that reactive so may we for any reaction to take place on paper to for any mobilization of aptama nanobodies antibodies or any reagents or nanoparticles what we need is we need to activate the paper we have to immobilize uh, these molecules so we have to activate the paper so that is one thing which we are doing a lot in our lab and why paper because paper is a inexpensive material i already told you it is available everywhere it is biodegradable so i can make my device and i can throw it away very easily without much of a problem and i uh, those de these devices are so small that you can you know carry uh, them with you anywhere you want uh, without much of a uh, hassle so uh, some of the device i can i will show you in my presentation some device i always carry with myself these are some sophisticated devices which we have made but inner side is actually normal devices um the actual there are some example of devices here for you um we can make large devices like this and there are we have various devices which are shown here in in this so these are all the kind of devices we make in our our lab and they are all portable you can easily take them anywhere you want and and use them okay now moving further what is the principle so uh, many of you now use a uh, ball pen but when i was a uh, kid i always used a um, fountain pen um, it was compulsory it was compulsory from school and also from parents that you should use um ink pens or fountain pen because they are your handwriting will be better than okay now when uh, at that time paper technology was not that advanced and if i use a bad quality paper and i put my fountain pen on top of it the ink will leak in all the direction that is what is happening here also this is a paper towel and on this paper towel if you put a ink then uh, that ink will leak on all the direction now if somehow we can make this blue color hydrophobic area on on the paper and immobilize some enzymes or uh, antibodies or aptamers or nanobots or reagents on the on the at the end of these these channels then when you will put a drop of sample it will move within these boundaries and it will eventually reach to this detection area and they will react and give you some color change or some electrochemical signal or anything else whatever you want to study so this is the basic principle you take paper you make hydrophobic channel and you do whatever you uh, wish to do you immobilize whatever you want to immobilize here one is one example uh, so i will just first stop this this is one example where we have uh, created a microfluidic device by a ink which we have developed in our lab and now i am filling it with uh, a um, with a methanol solution okay mind it it is a methanol solution most of microfluidic devices paper based devices actually work with aqueous solution so and now i will play it for you i am putting methanol 100% on this device so this pink color is the ink barrier which we have created with the with the uh, um ink which we have developed and you can see solution or or methanol is just moving within these boundaries here we can have recognition molecules so you can do all sorts of reaction here i will play it again just watch carefully that devices are we are giving direction to flow and it will reach will move within these channels only to reach to the end of the to uh, fork like uh, structure um, on the paper okay now there are various way of making paper based devices if you go to literature only nine are listed here but if you go and search for recent reviews you will find lot of methods few of them can be summarized in in a, in a very simple way 
some are plotter printing inkjet printing inkjet wax printing is also possible and fax fax graphic you know you have you must have seen paper or sorry um, cloth which is printed for for posters you might have got it printed also that is called fax flexi flexo printing so you take a flexi material and you print it uh, with with uh, with some paint and that paint or resin has as wax kind of um, behavior so th these are few commercially available methods of making devices then initially when the work was done in by dr white sides group officer white sides group they have used uh, photo resist they have applied uv light to crossing the photo resist and the empty area worked as a uh, uh, as a channel you can do one one step plotting i will talk about it in my presentation you can also spray liquor with uh, against a stencil you can do a uh, stamping like like a stamp which we use seal uh, kind of thing you can do wax dipping you can do etching there are various method you can do laser cutting you can do plotter cutting laser cutting and plotter cutting we also do in our lab so i will men i will um, you know mention everything to you so in our lab what we are using our uh, wax printers wax printer not printers x xy plotter and a laser cutter and these are few devices which we have made by wax printing with uh, plotter plotter printing xy plotter printing this is also xy plotter and these are all wax printed devices right now for wax printing we make our design whatever design you want like here we have flower shape design or or a circle design these designs are made in in a cat software we frequently use coral draw you can use any other software you can even use um um pp uh, powerpoint or or um, uh, adobe uh, illustrator once you print, uh, make the design then you can print it on this wax printer this wax printer is a, a very unique printer where you have solid ink which is uh, which is printed here so some of the solid ink are with me so this this is the solid solid ink all of you can can you can um, i mean all of you can see this yes sir yes sir so this yes. is the this is the this is the black color wax uh, cube this cube goes in the in the printer and then it melts and we can print with this okay now we print uh, on this and then we um, so now i'm when i'm printing something it will fall on the top of the paper okay it will not go on the, uh, at the end of the paper so if i put a solution here uh, on the paper what will happen is till this point nothing will leak but as soon as it will go down it will start leaking right so you have to make this bar barrier down to the other side of the paper so for doing that we heat the wax on the top so we put the paper which is printed to wax printer and we keep it at 120 degrees for 1 minute this wax will melt and it will percolate down to the other side of the paper it will also weak on the uh, on the horizontal axis not, not only in vertical axis but horizontal axis but not much but you should know how much it is going to uh, you know penetrate in into your structure so whenever we make design we decide that usually for wax printing you if you want to make a, a 5 mm circle then you have to design a 6 mm circle eventually you will get 5 5 mm circle if you have a channel of 1 uh, mm then you have to make 2 mm uh, uh, channel so that eventually you will get 1 mm m channel after heating so after heating this is our device ready and this is a sort of this is a sort of um, uh, a circle or a paper based elisa method where you can put your sample reagent analyze them put them in in a in a uh you can take a picture with the with the mobile phone or you can take um you can uh, image the uh, you can um take a, a scan image which you can analyze later on with image j and these are then once you have image j analysis you can calculate the mean intensity and you can correlate with your concentration this is what we have done now what you can also do is you can buy a xy plotter this xy plotter is expensive one but there are cheaper version of xy plotter also available if i i think i have a slide for that i will show you if not then i will tell you which printer it is 
here in this particular case you can take any permanent ink pen or you can develop your own inks with with a lot of resins available which are hydrophobic in nature in this particular case as soon as you write the ink will percolate down because this ink is made up of uh, organic solvents so it will percolate down and evaporate and it will also weak on the vertical direction again in most of the cases um, uh, the rule which i mentioned to you for wax printing stay true okay so if you are making one one mm uh, circle you have to make 2 mm this uh, circle design one mm channel to two mm channel should be designed like this and as soon as you are as, as soon as you will print you are ready to use this uh, this paper for further work and rest of the process that rest of the flow remains the same so this is my plotter uh, plotter cutter and i can take a permanent ink pen like the one shown here and they have a, a holder for pen where you can hold the pen so this holder is necessary for this kind of printer but if you don't have this printer then you can go to this website called as evil mad scientist website wherein you can get exe draw this is a very small piece of xy plotter which is available you can use this as a cutter also if you have blade or you can just use this for for you know for your ink or your permanent ink pens you can connect the pen here and you can connect it to laptop xio um uh, exio draw software is there along with it which which work very nicely with all 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 this uh, these methods okay uh, it's not very expensive i think it is 800 dollars or so and it comes in these these parts so there will be a um cardboard a connector power connector and a, a connector to computer up um, usb connector and few more connectors for connecting the pen and these are small items for you know opening the um, the allen key to open the screw here and other thing this is a very cheap option um uh, last time when we have purchased it cost us 40000 rupees or something like that but now they have a advanced version which is available in, in the market we have also developed our own ink so i'll just skip this because we don't have enough time but this is how we print this is a old printer not the new printer you can see with the ink which we have developed we are making the design so there are a lot of gap in between but you can fill it so throughput with xy plotter increases you can make designs in no time in a very big sheet and you can make lot of designs okay now if you don't have wax printer if you don't have a laser cutter if you don't have a xy plotter then you can use this printer uh, i i think shrishti have this printer which is called as hp p1606dn you can write it down this printer has a cartridge uh, the name of the name of the cartridge is ce278a which has styrene ferentine and wax both so wax is only 10% but styrene also work as a hydrophobic material which is 55% so you print again same thing after printing you heat the, the wax and the styrene will melt and go down percolate down to the other side of the paper and you are ready to work with this device only problem with this particular method is that you have to heat your paper at around uh, uh, 150 degrees or 180 degrees for 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes which is a long time and your paper may lose integrity what but what i heard from people working on this printer is that loss of integrity sometimes work positively for many of your reaction and i think that is what sahila is also exper experiencing she is printing our our blood typing devices now with this printer and she is getting much better results if i am not wrong yes sir so sometime losing integrity is a also good thing now whenever you work with any any uh, method whether it is a wax wax printing whether it is a ink pen whether you develop your own uh, ink or whether you cut it with X, xy plotter pen cutter or laser cutter always check what is your end application say for example if you are working with artificial uh, sorry if it tears sweat saliva blood and plasma you should optimize your process check that the paper on which you are working is compatible with your sample or not okay so in our case with permanent ink pen as well as with um, <clears throat> wax printing we have checked everything 
we can we don't have um, you know it's hard to get tears um, it's actually if i shout on anybody they will cry and i can collect the tear but it's not good so we created the artificial tear artificial sweat saliva we have collected um, either i gave my saliva or uh, the students who are working they give the saliva then they add the color solution they add the um, uh, food dye to color it so that we can see it properly and blood so any all these things can be can be used we have also tested various method with methanol ethanol and to see what can be used for uh, for such kind of work um there are various things which you should test depending on what test you are going to do what are the chemicals which are going to, which you are going to use in your work whether they are compatible with with the paper and the method of manufacturing your device or not that is very important so always remember whenever you use any material any method just cross check whether all your reagents are um um compatible with with the method or not okay so uh, like this we have tested with various paper watman paper 4 advertic paper watman paper 1 with different material we have tested and try to see whether stadler pen is work working for us better or wax printing is working for us uh, better so stadler pen a stadler permanenting pen actually is a very good pen and it it has better results than compared to wax printer so if you can buy med scientist xio draw plotter cutter for 40000 and you take 40 rupees stadler pen you can make at least um, uh, you can make devices on 5 a4 size uh, watman paper 4 which is quite cheap it is not 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 at all expensive so write it down stadler pen permanenting pen which can be used to make your devices very easily i can make the device you can make the desi uh, designs with your hand also if needed so some of the applications which i am showing here is blood plasma separation on paper these are our results but if you search literature you will get even better results these are the work these this 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 is some initial work in my lab when some undergrad student come and they work with us on certain project dissertation project i allow them to explore possibilities with this so these are some results from them where they have immobilized 20x pbs on on the on the sample pad and because of this 20x pbs the uh, the capillaries of paper get blocked but not that much that, uh, but only to to the extent that only rbcs will remain on the paper surface on the sample surface and rest of the things move same way can we can separate with edta and uh, this is sample simple plain sample zone so there is no separation at all here we have used antibody abd so you can see much clear plasma the amount of plasma separated is very less that can be optimized and in some cases you can see leakage of plasma from the device also in this particular case we have used a b and d plus 20x uh, pbs and it works much better for separation of plasma there are various other way like um, uh, just now sahila was talking to you she has developed a method using silicon oxide which work even better than this so such methods can be utilized now if you have such method you can use it as for glucose estimation also like we have done it here so we estimate glucose then we take the image of this we convert it into a gray scale then we measure the intensity of this area the mean intensity will give us the uh, um, uh, what is the concentration so these are some results you can see up to 100 um mg per dl it is linear but after that it is not linear so what you can do to make it linear you can make your own reagent so problem over here was that that we have used a commercially available uh, reagent kit and that will work in a completely different manner so you have to make your own enzyme solutions and you have to make your enzyme solution in such a way that you can get linear uh, so i'm why i'm showing all these results which have some negative results uh, because so that you will understand how simple it is and how to solve the problem now to make this linear to a larger range you have to work with enzyme you have to work with the solution you are taking and all those things so you can do similar kind of work in your lab very easily 
so this is our first work which we have done but we were able to publish it very after a long time maybe after working for 6 years and again sahila has contributed a lot in this work which we have published last year this year actually in journal of international uh, international journal of biomolecular biomolic biological macromolecules sorry so you we make the designs like this this is the normal print out which is very sharp as soon as you heat it you see it is the the wax is diffused and it becomes little hazy but this area remains you know hydrophilic now in this circle i will biofunctionize this circle so there we have done biofunctionization bring amino group here you can use any material for amino group um, bringing amino group there and we immobilize antibody so this is antibody a which normally as as a standard come in a blue color solution b will come as a yellow color solution which is very light in color here you probably hardly see it and d is always colorless and of course control where we don't have any antibodies so here you can see the yellow color okay so we take blood sample put it on the center of the device uh, and then wait for 5 minutes let it react with the antibodies and wash it with saline so while you are washing it with saline you have to put a a blotting pad underneath so we have blotting pad underneath so while we are doing washing with saline rbcs which are not coagulated will wash away from the surface like in this particular case you can see while we are washing rbcs are going away and this is the final result there is something is on the corner which is not not important more important is it can be because of you know some um, wax barriers were not closed completely so that is why they got stuck there but in this case because of uh, agglutination they are stuck here so these are some of our result what we have done is we have used kytosine for immobilization in this particular case to bring an uh, nh2 group and kytosine is a very good material for for uh, proper orientation of antibodies and these are our results for a b ab positive and o negative with this method what we found is that our devices are stable at ha huh, one important thing these <clears throat> antibodies which are used for blood typing are not stable at room temperature for more than 15 minutes though when we did our work we found that they are stable for in on paper they are stable for up to 10 days but when we do kytosin and naoh reaction or basically kytosin naoh cross linking we saw that our devices are stable up to 110 days actually now sahila uh, informed me uh, uh, when i was talking to her few days back that it's it's even more now uh, if i am not wrong and much better results so this is ongoing work and sahila is trying to take it to market uh, through strishti now we have also done some work on cholesterol measurement <clears throat> this was initial work which we did and then i'm again and again quoting sahila because most of the work she has done in my lab and i'm presenting that work so this is the work which she has done so when she came we have already done some work on on just cholesterol measurement i will not go into uh, all this reaction you all should know what sort of reaction take place in the body uh, actually cholesterol in our body uh, in uh, in blood remains as cholesterol esterase so first you have to break it bring cholesterol and then use cholesterol oxidase then this hydrogen peroxide which is generated will react with your uh, reagent now here amino pyridine and phenol we have used i told you before that you have to check all the chemicals i we thought we have almost check everything but when we did a reaction we saw this leakage then we went back and saw what is wrong what went actually wrong then we tried testing this with hydrogen peroxide four amino pyridine and then we eventually found that it is the culprit is phenol so that means we cannot use this reaction what can we do now so if you have studied biology you will immediately know where hydrogen peroxide can be used and yes we have replaced this amino pyridine and phenol with ortho aminophylline diamine which is a substrate for enzymatic reaction it gives you a different color 
so this is what we are currently using so this orthophenyl diamine turn into two dimethyl amino benzene and it, and that is what we are using currently in all our work so this is the orange color of um, of byproduct of uh, opd and you can see it is not leaking at all mm -hmm. and this is these devices are made by um, permanent ink pen then you can do image analysis so you can take the image you can analyze this particular portion of different concentration and and you are done by me so with this we were able to say only yes or no or if you if we um, scan the image and calculate the intensity we can calculate the amount also but by naked eye you can say yes or no so when sahila joined she extended this work for total lipid profiling so these are some of the designs for total lipid profiling how we made it how we put the reagent and then we do the same scanning and 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 uh, uh, analysis so these are some of our result for uh, total cholesterol we have correlated that with conventional method so we are getting sample from uh, from our dispensary and those samples they analyze separately we analyze separately then we ask for their result we take our result and we correlate them so we got very impressive 1.918 uh, uh, correlation coefficient for <coughs> ldl it was even better for um, hdl also it was impressive and also for uh, uh, tgl also it was quite impressive so now um, i i am not sure but probably um shrishti uh, will take this further um, along with me uh, at at certain time now one more application which we are exploring in our lab is surface enhanced raman microscopy um you probably all of you know what is surface enhanced raman microscopy it is uh, sorry uh, what is raman microscopy so it is part of raman microscopy so raman um phenomena or raman scattering was uh, was uh, um, invented by um, or observed by raman and then for that he got nobel prize but unfortunately raman instrument was never made in india raman raman spectroscopic method so we are trying to see if few of us can make some indigenous instrument my work is related to making the substrate for surface enhanced raman scattering and there is a group in in uh, trivendram they are making a handheld uh, machine for for uh, such kind of work now i will not go in detail of what raman scattering is we don't have enough time but i can teach you what exactly it is now when you take a molecule like one shown here and you um a light fall on on this you can collect the vibrational uh, energy which uh, this molecule we go through through uh, in form of raman scattering so these raman signals are very weak when a molecule a simple molecule is there if you want to enhance this you have to take number of molecules with a single molecule or very less molecule you will not get enhancement so it's a raman spectroscopy is a very weak method of identifying compound, compounds but it is a fingerprinting method a molecule will give you a fingerprint or a particular pattern of vibration uh, which will be unique so this technique has lot of potential if you can enhance okay but <clears throat> conventional method is not good enough so now what we can do is we take a metal nanoparticle please mind it we are talking about metal nanoparticle no other nanoparticle you can take aluminum particle you can take zinc nanoparticle you can take gold nanoparticle you can take silver nanoparticle you can take copper nanoparticle that is important that you should use uh, these uh, these nanoparticle and then when you bring um maybe okay so what will happen is some of this molecule disappeared i don't know what happened i'm very sorry about that so if this molecule sit here there and you put the light on this nanoparticle there is a electro magnetic field generated which is called as surface plasma resonance along with the molecular polarization so these two things molecular polarization and surface plasma resonance will enhance your your peak so this is the result from 
a single molecule this is the result from a molecule which is <clears throat> sitting on a nan nanoparticle and you can see how much enhanced this this peak is now if this molecule is sitting in between in between two nanoparticles with a distance approximately 4 to 5 nanometers close then you can you can get ultra enhanced raman intensity and it's a very powerful technique you can actually study a single molecule also okay so this whole thing i have uh, opted from one of the presentations from my colleague professor chandramouli uh, subramaniam from department of chemistry in iit mumbai i thought it's a very nice way of presenting what is the difference between raman scattering and surface enhanced raman scattering so we have plenty of method of making these um, raman um, uh, devices on paper so we take paper we laser cut the designs like this i have probably have the paper device also with me which i can show you here and uh, so this is the device okay now what we do is we we put um permanent ink pen uh, we, we we block this area with permanent ink pen and and this device is ready for further work so this is one example where we have just water we heat it at 100 degrees humidity there is no nanoparticle and we put a raman marker which is called as rhodamin 6g we use laser to you no know, with laser will fall on this and then we can detect the raman signal you can see we have hardly any peak but we when we take hydrochloric acid with kytosine again this technique is all patented and we are trying to transfer this technology to a us based company so when we heat it at 100 degrees under humidity condition we make uh, we get go nanoparticles and when we uh, apply laser we get huge enhancement of the signal for r6g so these are some example so these are the uh, when we do the reaction on on these paper when they are wet when they are dry you can see gold nanoparticle which is pink in color is deposited there depending on the concentration of uh, gold you can have very light to very high concentration of gold on your paper this is the a uh, close up of this paper this shiny part is actually excess gold which is created which is not so important for us for us this area is important when you see under the microscope you see the reflection coming out from gold nanoparticles and these are the sem images so you can see it looks like a galaxy isn't it this looks like a galaxy of uh, small <coughs> stars so these are gold nanoparticle of 40 nanometers and in some places they are very close some places they are very very far so it's not very uniform but it can be made very uniform by increasing the concentration now when we take this um gold nanoparticle coated um paper surface um, such substrate we put r6g which is pinkish or reddish in color so this reddish color is because of um, um r6g when we scan using a raman microscope you get this this type of signal out so the area where you have very dark red color they, that is in the focus so in this these places you will get maximum intensity so the group in in um, uh, nist trivendram uh, what they are trying to do is they are trying to collect this whole signal from this and then they do lot of uh, biostatical statistics um, calculation to get the um, intensity of of material these are the signals when we take r6g on paper same amount 10 mg sorry 1 mg uh, per ml and when we took the same amount on gold coat gold nanoparticle coated uh, device look at the uh, enhancement it is about 1000 time enhancement we did the work on how much what is the lowest we can go so we can go down to uh, picomolar level and we are trying to reduce it further with this i will come to a very important work and which we are trying to you know commercialize uh, as soon as possible so uh, that is detection of pregnancy in cattle all this uh, thing which you can read it's a big market huge market what is what important is traditionally 
how pregnancy test is done traditionally pregnancy test is done by palpitation method the one which is shown here in this picture so veterinarian will come you have to call a veterinarian he will take 500 rupees or so from you and he will put his hand after wearing the glove like this inside the uh, cow and try to feel the fetus try to feel the pul pul palpitation of the fetus okay i heard recently from dairy national dairy institute that while they are doing this nowadays some doctors are not that experience where they are doing this they create a lot of a problem for for the cow and they can abort the uh, fetus also so it's not a very good method and moreover it takes 3 to 4 months time to 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 know the um, um to know whether your your um, cattle is pregnant or not now in cattle the cycle the total cycle is completely different than human human being they have a 20 day cycle so if if a farmer is keeping a cow after artificial insemination for 3 4 4 to 6 months that means they are use, losing 6 to 7 cycles okay approximately six cycles they are losing if somehow we can tell tell them within a month time they will lose only one cycle and they can immediately go for new round of insemination and that will increase the milk production for that okay so we our aim is to reduce the intercalving time to tell farmers that you can do the analysis very quickly and uh, in abroad they you, they are using ultrasound also you all know that in india using ultrasound for even human application is quite cumbersome with lot of certification lot of um, um uh, regularity um, process you have to go through so it's not worthwhile to use in india so what we want to do is we want to develop uh, we wanted to develop it is already developed a working prototype paper based device for early detection of pregnancy in cattle which is available uh, on any shop you go to a shop which is related to agriculture products or uh, or um, um a pharmacy you collect this device and do it, do it by yourself so we made a device initially where we have only one paper where we can have a test zone positive control negative control so in both positive control and test we have standard antigen which we are identifying and this is all in fecal sample minded so it is non invasive we are not using milk milk can be also non invasive but in hyper hyper means the cattle which is uh, giving birth to a uh, uh, um, giving birth first time you cannot have milk so how you can analyze with from milk uh, pregnancy okay blood is also very troublesome because in blood you will measure progesterone progesterone in your blood or cattle's blood will keep on fluctuating okay it can go up and it will go down so you never know when you are taking the blood sample so it will not never be accurate now we what we are doing is we are collecting the whole day collection of fecal sample the gobar right that from that you will get the complete accumulated uh, metabolite of progesterone and that is what we are analyzing so from fecal sample we are analyzing a particular metabolite which is a progesterone metabolite which comes from the breaking of progesterone and we are analyzing that our method is very simple we take paper and we immobilize that metabolite standard one on the paper now we take a antibody which is coated which is conjugated with hrp and this antibody when we will put it will go and react with the antigen which is coated on paper okay now when you wash it they will not move they will remain there so you will get dark blue color of the substrate which we are going to use okay now in test zone apart from standard antigen you are putting the sample also sample will also have these antigen now when you will put antibodies they will preferably react with the loose antigens which are in the solution and when you will wash it they will go away and only one which is bonded to paper will remain there so this is competitive alisa in this particular case we will get less color or no color so this is what we wanted to do 
if it is a pregnant sample we will get only one color in positive control there will be less color on t or no color while in case of non pregnant sample we get two color both on on uh, test zone as well as as well as uh, your um, stand, um, positive control okay so these are some of our results these are uh, this is non pregnant this is pregnant sample and i will show you a video so now this device we are putting the sample on test zone now we will put reagent 1 on test zone and as well as on positive control now we will put reagent two which is buffer washing buffer you are washing it away and then we are putting substrate so you can see color is developed in both the both t and and uh, positive control test and positive control so it is a it is a non pregnant sample now in this particular case on the right hand side we have placed the sample now we are going to pay, put the reagent which is antibody washing buffer and then substrate so you can see on positive control we are getting color on test zone we are not getting any color so that means it is a pregnant sample now when we were doing this work we got a lot of reviews from our reviewers who have funded us and they said that look your method is very good but it is a multi step method no formal will farmer will use um, a such kind of method so now we have a very simple method you put a sample and then just put the buffer and turn it around and you get the result so these are the sort of commercial devices which we are or field testing devices which we are make, making all 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 instructions are written there and i will i have showed you, showed you this device um just a um, couple of minutes ago this is my complete device this is the back side of the device where you have result with whatever result you have pregnant non pregnant or negative results are also mentioned there so now just put sample twice and you are done so these are uh, this is the method we have patented this in india as well as abroad and uh, we are talking to a canadian and indian company to take it further see this video it will be quite good for you about the working of this device so this is how much is the market so it is important i just uh, on this slide you have seen i have done enough market survey before i started a work that is very important we as a scientist in academia always forget to do the market survey to check whether there is a need for something or not you have to always check the need okay i will play it further किसी ने फोन किया था आपको मैंने काट दिया था सो दिस इज फीकल सैंपल यू हैव टेकन इट इन अ स्मॉल बॉटल वेयर यू हैव अ रिएजेंट दिस इज आल्सो प्रोप्राइटरी रिएजेंट फॉर एक्सट्रैक्शन इट्स अ वाटर बेस्ड a method not uh, not alcohol based
So the kit will come in in, in this this particular way. Um, there will be two devices, reagents, and now this partial profits are not given. Uh, we are trying to reduce it, and um, the other things are also there. So this is the complete device which we are trying to you know market, and this is the video which we made for for that purpose. Um, okay, we will go back to this slide. Right. So I think we have another half an hour. So I will talk a little bit more. So these are the kit and superiority of kit are listed here. And there is no industry in India which is making these devices. So it holds a lot of potential. Okay. Now, when we were doing this work, we thought, can we do something else? So we thought of doing viscosity measurement with this device. So you all know viscosity is measured by host wall viscosity meter, wherein you put uh, oil about um, 500 ml, sorry, 500 microliters. You wait for that material to start moving from this mark to that mark. Once it reaches to that mark, you stop your stopwatch and, and calculate how much that particular material has moved. And then you use this formula first of all uh, for viscosity measurement where this is viscosity of your test material this is viscosity of water as a reference viscosity density of your material which you are taking time taken by your material for which you are calculating viscosity to move from this mark to that mark this is density of water which is one and dense uh, and time taken by water to move from starting point to stop point can we make a device out of it so yes we can so what we have done is we have made a device like this i have shown you this device uh, some time ago similar similar device we laser cut it we block the arms these are support arms with permanent ink pen wax or wax wax you put the sample there and let the sample move once it will start moving in this channel we start the stop watch and once it is reaches there, we stop the stopwatch. We measure the time. We have done this. So these are this is the complete setup of what how we are using it. And this is a video. This is about a minute video. I will try to run run through it. So this is now we are starting the stopwatch as as soon as it reaches there. And this is sucrose or glucose, sixty percent. If I am not wrong, we will check in the in the table later on which i when i will show you and now it is reaching there and you can see it is almost touching there and my time is stopped at 1.43 second one minute and 43 seconds okay so remember this or maybe more no yeah correct so 60 plus uh 40 um so 103 seconds um 103 seconds okay now this is our result with glucose so we made different concentration of glucose 0 to 80 these are the density these are the average time taken by a sucrose solution to move these are the average viscosity calculated by the formula which i showed you these are these are in 10 replicates we have used 10 devices and these are 10 measurement with the error bar mentioned here okay so this is the time taken and this is the same result with host wall viscosity meter with three repetition when we plot them against each other to see the correlation look at this impressive correlation the paper device viscosity with host wall viscosity um, measurement give us 0 0.9995 per, um, correlation coefficient which is very impressive and nobody has shown this before in 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 in, in the world similarly we have done done it with sucrose from 0 to 60 
and you can see it was a 40% um, percent sucrose solution which I showed you, which is showing about 108.5 plus minus 963 error. So error is little more, but it works very well. So the, the device which I showed, showed you was 40% sucrose solution device. <clears throat> And correlation is again very impressive, 2.99996. So this is uh, this method we have used to check um, viscosity, of, viscosity of saliva of a healthy person, and the viscosity came out to be 2.428 for a healthy individual at 24 degrees. And when we do it at 37 degrees, it is 1.53. Again, which co this correlate to a handy, healthy individual. Um, uh, a person if you have you are suffering from some disease then it will reduce similarly you can check whether a protein is native or not so if a native protein will have less viscosity it will move it will move easily on the paper device but denatured protein will fold itself so it will not move that freely you can read this paper if you want in analytical chemistry for further further um, um, reading Apart from that, we have recently developed the aptamer based uh, uh, HCV detection method, which is shown here. What we do is we modify this surface with xyl amino xyloglucone and then PDITC. PDITC is a, is a uh, um, isothionide thiocyanide group that will help in uh, reaction with aminolated uh, um, aptamers, which are immobilized. We spot the, the protein or, or the virus there. Then we use gold nanoparticle, which is tagged with uh, C97 uh, gold nanoparticle. Once we spot it, we wash it. Once we wash it, if at all reaction is taking place, they will remain there. Rest of the things are washed. So this is how we can make, we can detect HCV in our dot blot kind of assay. We are also working on nucleic acid extraction, amplification detection in the same <coughs> paper. So this can be a blood plasma separator. And then these are the channels for movement of your separated material, DNA. It will reach or RNA, it will reach to and where we can do reverse transcriptase reaction or amplification and detection. So to do that, we have done in separate everything separately. We can lyse and extract the material. So this is the lysing device, which we have made. We put the blood drop. And when we wash with washing, um, you can see the blood is uh, moving away. So there is no RBC left. And when we take the extract, this extract is then analyzed. So you can see genomic DNA is very easily extractable. So it is a very good amount of uh, DNA, genomic DNA, which we got, and you can analyze it further for for quantification. And the yield we have calculated with qubit. Never use nano drop; it's not a good method. A qubit is little expensive uh, methodology, but it gives you much better results. So we have calculated um, uh, genomic DNA as well as RNA from this. RNA you cannot see it here because it, the amount is very less. But you, if you can convert that RNA into cDNA, you can analyze it and you can you can do amplification. You can take some genes. In our case, we have taken uh, beta 2 hemoglobin gene and we have uh, we have analyzed that and saw that it is actually the RNA, uh, con the converted RNA which we are getting from extraction. <clears throat> we are also doing RT process on paper where we take G4 wax paper and laminated G4 wax paper we put complete cocktail on the paper. We do the same reaction as a control in the tube. And these are our results. So we, this is the transcriptase results of uh, RT results of HCV RNA on paper. And we have compared it with, uh, with uh, normal PCR. So this is, this is our result with paper devices. And this is our result with um, tube. So tube result is, of course, more. But you are getting the result with paper also. This is more important. And these are the varying number which we can actually measure in, in a paper device. So anything which is more than 100, um, uh, about 1000 copy number can be detected. So it is, it need to be improved, but this is sort of possible. <clears throat> these are some of the results of isothermal amplification, wherein we use RPA technology. So in this particular method, we have done azospermia infiltrate infiltrate test in 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 males 
we can easily do that also on paper devices um diagnostic for all is one company which is working on um, paper devices now it is closed and um, uh, and um somebody else has taken it over and they actually made a liver function test and they are trying to commercialize it there's this new company is trying to commercialize it so there are various application i'm just telling you the important application again this is from diagnostic for all they made a device wherein you can do ferritinine um carotene as well as uh, retino binding protein analysis for food micronutrient analysis with this i would like to add, add my talk and at the moment we are two uh, members in the group myself and uh, and another scientist principal scientist uh, dr ira patnagar we are working together and we receive fund from dbt and csir and dsir um this is ccmb main campus this is the old picture of that but that is the best picture to understand how big or small is ccmb this is again ccmb main campus this is a campus we where we are working this is called as medical biotechnology campus and we also have another campus which is called as laboratory for conservation of endangered species about uh, about 25 kilometers from main campus ccmb with this i would like to thank you all for your attention and if you have any questions i will be more than happy to answer we have 20 minutes or so for for discussion mega yes sir yeah yeah so uh, students now we have time for your uh, queries and discussions so please go ahead Hello. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Good morning, sir. Hello, um, Devraj. Yes, yeah. Sir. Tell me, Devraj. Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, my question, uh, uh, sir, in the paper, sir, microfluid devices. Uh, so, sir, you told uh, in this uh, x, y, sir, axis. Okay, sir, x, y plotter. So, I want to know the what actually what happened in the x axis and y axis, sir. Please let me know again, sir. nothing so you have your pan will move in x and y direction both the direction it will move so when you have a, a mobility of this an x y di direction you can make your design easily so that is what it does the pan move in two direction x and y and that is why it can make a lot of designs okay sir and uh, sir a uh, uh, second question sir uh, uh... sir in the sir paper microfluids paper sir so mainly contains sir the uh, biomolecules sir right sir like sir like glycerol and h2o2 that is the hydroperoxide so sir my question in this case sir it can be sir deterioration from the atmosphere like air uh, light uh, and the uh, i mean moisture content sir it can be sir deterioration their their molecular structure sir no molecular structure of your reagent Yes. yes they can um, there are chances so that is why like i mentioned to you antibody when we mobilize we check the long term long time stability of those antibodies yes, we do accelerated temperature measurement because india is a hot country so we we check the temperature whether this antibodies when which we are immobilizing on paper are stable for long enough by accelerated temperature measurement at 45 degrees then we take it measure it for many days to optimize it Uh, so there are various way of saving your material as far as sample is concerned if your sample is very highly corrosive you cannot use it with paper devices because it will immediately oxidize or reduce but other than that everything can be used there are uh, examples where paper devices are used even for pharmaceutical drug analysis yes yes sir right sir okay thank you sir uh and uh... Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Welcome, dear Raj. Good afternoon. Hello. Yeah, Pratik Shah. Yes, yeah. Yes, sir. So I wanted to ask that uh, you have you said that don't use nano drop in our RNA extraction or some nucleic nucleic acid extraction. You should use UV. Yeah. So why should we don't use uh, nano? Nano nano drop is a very good method to to do. Um, normal estimation you know just for having estimation that how much rna you have extracted and but it is never be accurate it will never it cannot be accurate 
until unless you are using uv spectrophotometer that is a different case altogether the amount which you are taking is very less okay 1 microliter or 2 microliter handling that much of a, uh, amount is even more difficult many people say, will argue that oh we are using pipette but do you know how to use pipette many people even in scientific field don't know don't know how to use the pipettes then when you are using it your user before you whether he has cleaned the surface or not is also important maybe you can get cross contamination from that while in cuvette it is different it's a fluorescent based detection system so you put your dna with this fluorescent agent and you measure so that fluorescent intensity will directly correlate to your your um, concentration of your material so it will be more accurate than nano nano drop nano drop is used frequently but until unless you have a good practical hand you have cleanliness uh, in your lab it will not give you good results okay sir thank you sir see i am telling you all these things because i have learned it hard way i had to go through um, you know very vigorous reviews many times and then many times very senior people will tell me hey why you are using nano drop it is not useful then i started looking for other other methods so these are all the things which we don't learn in the uh, in the classes in schools which you can learn from people and what whatever i learn in a hard way i try to tell to students like you in these courses what is the best way of doing it no way you, it is is a bad bad instrument you can definitely use it but you have to be very sure about your pipetting skills uh, cleaning and less of the lab but there will be always chance of some misinterpretation of your results by the instrument okay sir any more questions or everybody slept while i was i was talking oh, hello sir kartik this side yes sir yeah, yeah kartik yeah, Uh, yes sir. so actually we have a protein estimations regularly in our lab for which we use bradford assay so so there the bradford usually gets uh, expired within a year is it possible to use this technique to immobilize the uh, cr250 uh, the cbb onto a, a paper microfluidic chip and then we can use it for um, qualitative purpose if not quantitative because yeah, surely you can try that there are various method of immobilizing so which molecule you say can you repeat the i was i missed it so uh, want... we usually use cbb r250 molecule in the bradford uh, it's mixed ah, with right, methanol right. and acetic acid sure you can immobilize that uh, there are various way of immobilizing uh, it also um i have to look at it what is the structure and everything but definitely anything can be mobilized if not yes, mobilized sir. you can you can use certain gel and this um these molecules can sit in that gel and that gel can be uh, you know dried a bit once you will wet it the molecule will again get active exactly so so it will reduce the time for our estimations and i think it's a very innovative right. yeah. thank you sir thank right. you for right. the talk thank you sir welcome uh hello sir uh yeah devraj uh, uh sir uh, yeah, uh, all the sir product is available in the market sir were patented by the csi or ccm or sir ccmb um so uh, these technologies are available uh, if you want to take it none of the products came in the market as yet in fact none of the paper devices are in the market at the moment okay sir okay sir thank you Hello, sir. I am Sopnil from Maharashtra. Yes, Sopnil. Uh, sir, my general question is about uh, how the training of this uh, techniques and all of this for CCMB or uh, in any other institute like that for the undergraduate student or postgraduate student or integrated. Yeah, anybody can come. Actually, uh, we can only. Um, so, if you are talking in my group, I can only have at the moment because of COVID only one person at a time. Uh, but CCMB has lot of schemes. for undergrad student they can they can do the they can they can do the uh, analysis um, they can do the training for 6 months or a year 
or they can choose for um, um, uh, surface for uh, sorry for summer training program for two months so these are the way in summer training we can accommodate two three people and they can come and uh, get the training but if you have enough resources with you if you have a permanent ink pan uh, xy plotter or you if you want if you have an idea you can explore it with yourself it's not uh, a rocket science uh, i that is why i am trying to tell everyone that you can do anything any you can test your any uh, any of your idea with just with permanent ink pen and and and, and make their design by yourself by just, just drawing by hand like i i have this pen and i can if i can find a paper okay like this paper is there i can draw it here very easily right any design i am doing it fast so it will not go on the back side but it should go on the back side completely okay um let me check if i have a better pen so i'm taking a thicker permanent ink pen so if i draw it here slowly if i will turn it around then i can draw it here also to make sure that it is not it will not leak okay now if i will put a drop here of water see it is mo moving within the boundaries can you so oh, sorry uh can you see it yes sir yes sir so this is how you can you can make your device this pen is not very good so i can see some leakage there but um stadler pen work very nicely unfortunately i don't have stadler pen here in my on my desk otherwise i would have shown you with that okay so this is how you can you can make your devices very easily so if you take stadler uh, permanent ink pen it, i don't have any here in my desk at the moment must be in the lab so that is how you can you can use it so you can uh, sotnil you can easily make without any training you can work on it just explore and see my email address is given there you can write it down double a at the rate ccmb.res.in or amit asthana 4 number 4 at the rate gmail.com write to me i will help you whatever in whatever way it is possible okay sir thank you sir uh, one more question is uh, is the international market in international market how is the value of this products and any idea about that value of the product will depend on the use uh, demand of the product okay so for example we are doing lot of um, market study for pregnancy kit of device so there is a huge market and market will also depend on what price you are quoting for your device hey if you go to uh, western countries in india it is 500 rupees for calling the veterinarian and checking the um, uh, pregnancy if a veterinarian is very well trained he can tell you in two months time so you are saving time but as far as devices are concerned these devices are costing somewhere around 500 rupees to 300 rupees and they are not freely available whenever i have tried i have never never got it in western world it is costing you 50 rupees 50 dollars to 40 dollars so i am talking to one company uh, called uh, catalytic uh, catalytic canada and they are ready to purchase our um, technology and they uh, have got the estimation of uh, manufacturing of these devices so for their manufacturing cost is somewhere around 2 dollars so they can easily sell it for 10 dollars still um, the end user is getting it for 30 dollars or 40 dollars less and there are so many there are about um 134 million uh, cattle which can uh, you know uh, which can uh, uh, milking uh, cattle milk uh, cattle what they call it so multiply it with 10 that is the market 
you are still getting eight to eight dollars extra nine dollars actually oh sorry eight dollars here two rupees manufacturing eight dollars is your profit so you have to you have to do that calculation based on you know end user what is the current rate what is what will be your cost of making devices what cost you can sell it in the market and what will be your profit there are various things which which uh, you need to learn i am also learning so maybe shrishti have any program like this they can teach you how to do market survey and business plan all those things you got okay, my sir. points of nil is it is it clear or you want me to clarify it further yes sir uh, but uh, i want why i am asking this question because the horian university in canada they call for me proposal like in air pollution so i am asking you to what is the international value of these products sir uh, and last no, question no, is that see, a product will have market value depending on its use and end user you cannot say what is the market rate of a product like this if you are talking about manufacturing cost it will depend on the size of your device like these devices which i am i showed you for pregnancy kit uh, when we are working in the lab with a small design without packaging it is costing us only 2 to 3 rupees but when it comes to packaging and everything it is it is the price increase of 25 rupees okay so this is the manufacturing cost and you will never sell anything on manufacturing cost will you because you have to take care of the people working with you electricity and several other things isn't it so yes, yes. you your uh, question is absolutely wrong okay you cannot say what is the market price of the technology it will depend on end use end use and the person and where you are applying it i will give you another example there is a company called micro life sign innovation in in chennai they are they are making the um, uh, what do you call it um, milk adulteration <laughs> device okay for for their design it is costing them 50 paisa but market there is very tight no so they are they are born to sell it for only 1 rupees other competitor are selling similar sort of device not paper device but similar sort of device of 1.5 rupees okay so it all depends on what is the market what is the market of that product that you have to check first you cannot just by closing guy you cannot say uh, this oh paper device 5 rupees no not not possible and uses and user and uses the way of calculating the price of any 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 device okay okay sorry sir why, but my, my question is not that we, what is the international market value of this technology my question is that the product uh, which manufactured that uh, is there a demand in western or eastern countries like that uh, i think so sorry, sir. i think sir, he wants to ask them what is the importance of these techniques for his field whatever uh, they are asking uh, him to you know work on air pollution or something he whatever right. for that also you have to check what are the current methods of analysis right okay. first check what are the current methods of analysis how much is how much it is costing if you are going to make a design or device how much it will cost you roughly calculate by paper what is the cost of paper what is the uh, cost of reagent and decide this is okay this is how it will it is costing me as a researcher okay anyways when you are a researcher and we are when you are purchasing things you are purchasing purchasing in a less quantity so it will be more expensive but somebody will start manufacturing it in a large scale it will be it will be less expensive but giving a number is impossible sapnil okay sir sir i will make a report and i will mail it to it ha huh, sure please discuss. i will i will um, help you in that okay sir thank you very much sir so i have a question sir yeah so uh, for diagnosis of uh, any disease which one would actually uh, prove to be better in e efficiency is it paper based microfluidic devices or flow based microfluidic devices the, the lab on chip uh, those devices sir 
both have their advantage and a disadvantage but if you um, if you tell if you want me to compare it paper devices will be cheaper because of their uh, cost of their uh, cost of making these devices but, okay. but if you now uh, flow based devices based on polymer can be made very easily in bulk uh, then they they are also not not very expensive it all depends on what exactly you are trying to address and how you are going trying to address uh, the closed devices the the labona chip microfluidic devices made on made of uh, plastic substrate or glass substrate glass will be expensive for sure but plastic substrate have disadvantage their channels can block very easily if you don't uh, filter it so there are advantage and disadvantage of both the both the methods paper devices also have their disadvantage so depending on your application you have to decide but i will always vouch for paper devices because i am i am a person of that field uh, okay uh, okay sir but real time application uh, paper devices are used more or uh, flow devices there is not a single paper device in the market at the moment janak okay. everything is plastic device major companies are all the commercially available microfluidic based devices are actual plastic based devices or polymer based devices there is not a single paper based device available at the moment though some people consider uh, you know even nitrocellulose membrane based cartridges uh, like like this one as paper yes. device it's not paper device it's a nitrocellulose membrane it okay. is different, different than paper here solution moves on the on the top surface not not inside the yes. channel okay like uh, one of our sister lab has already made a paper based covid testing device it's not paper based it is nitrocellulose based okay sir it it's perception i am saying it's not they will say it's it's it is thank you sir it answered my question thank you sir हेलो सर सर मैं लास्ट क्वेश्चन सर देवराज सर प्लीज सर डोंट माइंड सर सर इज द सीएसआईआर सीसीएमबी हैज प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर कोविड-19 किट सर एनी किट फॉर डिटेक्शन फॉर द कोविड-19 सर फॉर पेपर बेस्ड डिवाइस नो बट अदरवाइज दे हैव दे हैव माय कलीग्स हैव डेवलप्ड अ ड्राई स्वैप मेथड वेयर यू डोंट हैव टू पुट द स्वैप इन द बफर सॉल्यूशन यू कैन जस्ट take the swap and put directly in the machine without any further delay so they that save lot of time and uh, reagent and they have also developed two rt pcr methods which uh, if i am um, i am no no uh, when but with apollo they are going to bring it to market very very soon yes sir okay sir okay in fact um, uh, Jet Airways has also purchased that technology from CCMB. So when Apollo will make, they will supply it to Jet Airways for for their uh, in-flight um, COVID testing. Okay, okay. Thank you. So Megha, can we um, close the session because I have a meeting in another two minute, three minutes. Sure, sir. Uh, it was really wonderful, sir. Always to have your session and always you taking out time for the kids. And um, uh, we always look forward for your support and guidance. Always uh, for future workshop. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank you. Thank. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. You always write me an email if you have any questions. Still have any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. I have to leave now. Bye. Have a nice day. Thank you so much, Bye, sir. sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. बंद किया तो तो बंद नहीं हुआ. Okay, students. So uh, I was hoping that you will uh, ask so many questions, but uh, I don't know whether you have understood the whole concept or not. have you understood yes yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am so i 
always you know advise you or i have urged you that before the session please read something about the particular session then only you will going to get and understand 100% right i can understand because uh, all of you are not coming from the same background i mean you are not studying the same subject so we have kept all together uh, many technical sessions and uh, some other informative sessions and some bio informatics and all but and men i i don't know uh, you are interested in all or not but still i'll say whatever session we have kept or we have arranged for you guys are you know you will not going to have it any other uh, platform right so and we are inviting so uh, you know distinguished faculty scientist or the speakers uh, which are not easily available or you will not going to have that opportunity to directly uh, contact uh, contact him or directly to work with them you will not going to get the chance if you are going to attend any conference or any seminar you will not going to have the chance to you know directly uh, communicate or directly discuss these things with them are you getting my point yes yes ma'am yes ma'am so this is the only chance you can directly ask your queries you can discuss your ideas or whatever you are thinking about that particular topic you can directly discuss with them and they are kind enough they have no time. i mean their one and half hour time is like very precious and only srishti can do this for you have you seen the schedule whatever the personality we have invited for this webinar or earlier schedule also you can see you can watch on youtube that what are different speakers has come earlier right so please try to you know um, take this opportunity wisely utilize this time and this opportunity wisely that's it that's all i want to say yes ma'am right and if you will go in future also if you are going to contact any of the speaker or any of this faculty uh, by the reference of b school or bis workshop they'll like they'll help you definitely so this is you know uh, something very important and you are at the stage where further you have to study you can have training of, on different subjects or different aspects or uh, many of you wants to do dissertation or small projects or maybe you are going to enroll in research or phd so this is very important if you uh, you know collaborate or you can engage with this uh, personality or these labs that will definitely boost your career or your dreams whatever you are, you have idea right yes ma'am 